So one of the things I wanted to do was to look at the placards and complaints of people protesting the Kimono Wednesday activity at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts and see whether or not their accusations actually carry any water. So let, let's have a look at what they had to say. It wouldn't be so bad without wide institutions condoning erasure of the Japanese narrative and Orientalism, which in turn supports discrimination, fetishizing AAPI, and it's killing us. I think if you're having to resort to hyperbole to make your point, there's probably something the matter with your point. Let's see, the first accusation there is wide institutions condoning erasure of the Japanese narrative. I'm wondering where they're actually getting from. Where has that actually happened? Because at the exhibition it appeared at was actually one where they were highlighting the influences of Asian art on European art. So it, it's actually paying an homage, paying a loving tribute to Asian culture. And it's difficult to understand why the protesters would not be able to understand or, or appreciate this. And I think it is partly because there is this cultural disparity between Asians living in their own country, where they're part of the majority, and Asian people living in Western countries, where they're part of a minority group. They feel very different, they have a very different concept of self, and so the debate would naturally perpetuate itself. Now another accusation that appears on the sign is of Orientalism. Now, Orientalism is something I fiercely opposed for most of my life. Now, Orientalism is basically the idea of the Western world forming a stereotyped view of Asian culture and not really knowing about what's underneath that. The problem is that having an ignorant appreciation of somebody's culture is very different to not seeing them as a human being. Certainly there is a sort of mystery and mysticism with which the Western world viewed the you know Asian countries for a long time but that's mostly because that that mostly came from ignorance they didn't really know anything about it they didn't really have any way so it's not really fair to be that angry so you know people participating in kimono Wednesdays do not necessarily share in the same attitudes of orientalism. There's nothing intrinsically sexual about the image, so the fe claims of fetishizing have nothing to them. And uh, as for killing them, it's pretty clear that there's no stabbing or punching or any physical harm of any kind going on in the image. Well, there's, there's a very long history of Japan doing horrible, horrible things to Korea. And yet, you know, I've looked into it, and the three women on the right side of the, the photograph are actually a mix of Japanese and Korean women, so they're unified by this event. You know, they've been brought together, and it looks like it's the uh, protesters who have come in and, you know, messed around with it. Let's see, an another sign I can see in this picture says it is being held by one of the Japanese women, and her sign says... Wearing a kimono does not make me a racist or an imperialist. The Western world is not the only imperialistic culture. The Japanese were even more fiercely imperialist. That's why the Second World War happened at all. I have actually had people say to me, you know, you shouldn't wear kimono because the Second World War happened and because the Japanese did horrible things to people and they were imperialists. And, you know, even though there's a lot of hostility there, it's still a lot more peaceful than the history that has typically gone on between Asian countries. Uh, another sign says, let's dress up Orientalism with more Orientalism. In my mind, if they had just gotten a cheap tacky knockoff of eBay, that would have been a case of dressing up Orientalism with more Orientalism. The fact that they got a real genuine Japanese kimono and brought that there to me, that's an example of people diffusing Orientalism and replacing it with the reality. Another sign says, this is racist, this is appropriation, this is Orientalism. Now, I, I would argue that racism is an attitude. It's not an action, it's an attitude. So, you know, I, I would argue that they're once again in, assuming on intent. They're assuming that the people participating in the activity are racists. 
when they very well might not be. They might be people who do have a genuine and sincere interest in learning more about kimono culture. Is it appropriation? Appropriation assumes that the culture is being stolen and taken away. People all over the world have been wearing Western clothing for decades. People from all different cultures have, but nobody is confused about where, where Western clothing originated. So I fail to see how one little exhibition in Boston is going to make people think that kimono are somehow owned by white people. Now let's see what this picture says. Just kidding, I get it. It's supposed to give Caucasians the opportunity to be dressed in kimono so they know what it's like to be appropriated and fetishized. Again, I don't see this as a legitimate accusation. There's nothing about the image that is at all sexual. Um, the woman's covered from neck to foot. I don't know how it could be less sexualized. Um, and, you know, more ironically, the comment comes from a Korean descent woman. Now, Koreans, as I've said before, have notoriously been persecuted by Japanese people for generations. Let's see what the next comment says. There's a difference between appreciation and appropriation, MFA. As a former Boston resident and patron of the museum, I'm embarrassed for you. Yes, let's all appreciate Camille Monet and the Orientalism of the past by bringing it into the present and framing it to be okay. Is that what's really happening in the image, though? Are they actually saying that it's, it's okay to be racist against Asian people? No, again, there's nothing hostile about it. If anything, they're indicating that you know, you can happily participate in two different cultures and, and do so respectfully. If Is June 19th dress up as your favourite appropriated culture day? Again, there's no indication that she's dressing up as a Japanese person. You know, even notes on the original painting make it clear that that's not what was being attempted. Camille Monet deliberately put on a blonde wig to emphasise her own Europeanness and she's holding a, a fan that's the French colours. In other words, she's trying to make a statement about, you know, being comfortable with her own cultural identity and, you know, being able to really uh, respect and appreciate somebody else's, to my mind. That's so I'm certain this means I can prance about posing in front of other paintings in a powdered wig and frou-frou Victorian attire, maybe with calamine lotion on my face. Yes, this is a good idea. Do what you want. It's you're not hurt, if you're not hurting anybody, why not do it? And they're not, you know, trying to take Japanese pride away from Japanese people and they're not, you know, they're, they're not actually trying to hurt anybody. They're just wearing a garment. This is honestly one of the most vilely racist things I've ever seen. White folks wanting to play dress up and feel Japanese. Please don't. Japan isn't your mythical fantasy playground for you to go gallivanting around in a dead Frenchman's orientalist version of Japan. Well, yeah, again, this all assumes that you're, you're not permitted to do anything with a garment that doesn't perfectly recreate its traditions. And the thing is, already for a very long time, Japan has a precedent for not perf perfectly replicating its culture because its culture was only solidified after they started to interact with the Western world. Prior to that, their culture was one that could be questioned, that was frequently being reimagined by themselves and, you know, constantly adapting. So, no, it's not a legitimate accusation. Have you read the description of the piece? Camille wearing a blonde wig to emphasize her Western identity. As if race is just about hair color. Or worse, that in order to make the painting easily consumable to white audiences, her whiteness must be emphasized. Yeah, again, they're, they're assuming a lot about intent. If I was going to put on an uchikake and a blonde wig together, it, it for me it would be an intensely pro-multiculturalist statement. Um, I, I do this sort of thing all the time, actually. I, I replicate the old style of wearing um, frilly blouses with kimono, specifically because I want to diffuse negative anti-Asian stereotypes. Tammy Lam says, a call was made to the MFA and they said the event was to bridge co the cultures. Which is true, the, the Japanese government was actually involved in the planning of the event. The better idea curators would be to hire a real kimono teacher and a kimono model. 
or met one in Japan to come in and have your patrons try on a kimono or yukata. I've gone to kimono exhibitions before where they actually had yukata for people to try on and for me this was actually more irritating and offensive. It, it would be akin to somebody taking a painting of a steak to Japan and then giving kids a whole lot of little Happy Meal burgers. It's offensive to to imply that simple cotton yukata and silky fantastic uchikake are exactly the same thing in the first place. The sort of kimono and yukata that kimono teachers actually work with are, are very different to the type that appears in that painting. It, it can be argued that they could have properly dressed people up, but that would have made people even more angry because that type of uchikake is actually intended for use by actual geisha. So you would have had white people being dressed up as geisha and that would have just made the, the protesters even more angry. It's not racist if you look cute, exotic in it, besides the MFA supports this. The MFA is all about cultural experiences. Try on the kimono, learn what it's like to be a racist imperialist today. Now, one of the reasons I didn't think that this um, protest would be very effective in ending racism is partly because of how confusingly their placards are worded in the first place. There's nothing here that would really explain to a racist imperialist why what they're doing is actually wrong. It, it just makes it seem like somebody's being a bit rude and a bit selfish. You can't assume on a person's intent just by looking at their actions. They're very different things. So the kimono is dress, not costume. I totally agree, which is why people should be permitted to wear it. it they're, they're wearing an actual kimono dress, not a costume. Orientalism, exotification, dehumanization, foreign bodies, bodies of color. This doesn't really explain anything. It doesn't actually deal with anything that's going on in the exhibit itself. So it, it doesn't really give any information about why what is being done is actually, you know, even offensive in the first place. It just tells people that they are offended. Le Japonaise. 21st century American imperialism at its finest. Pay dollars to the MFA to devalue the experiences of people of color and exercise your privilege. How is it devaluing the experiences of people of color? If anything, it's enshrining it and encouraging people to learn about the experiences of people of color. This exercise your privilege relates to the idea that all white people are born privileged for the fact of being white, which isn't really true. The fact is that a, a clean cut professional looking Asian person is always going to have an easier time getting a job than some, you know, hillbilly white trash. Um, for those who don't know, AAPI stands for Asian American Pacific Islander. I've been concerned with ra issues of racism my whole life and I only just found out what that means. Um, another sign says, I am a Japanese language teacher and I welcome museum exhibits that share Japanese culture with the community. Bring back Kimono Wednesday. This is great, only the protesters are fully aware that Japanese people from Japan don't actually have any problem with the exhibit. Another sign says, White America does not deserve to touch kimonos on display racks until they stop treating me like a kimono on a display rack. Who told you you can touch me? I can't speak for the life experiences of this woman, but she is saying that all of white America is treating her like a kimono on a display rack. That's very confusing. How are they treating her as a kimono on a display rack? You know, if they are objectifying her, how would the action of touching a kimono on a display rack impact that? How would it encourage it? I think it's more likely to discourage it because they'll be more deeply acquainted with the history behind Asian culture. Um, and I think by, you know, being concerned that by becoming more acquainted with traditional Asian culture, they're going to objectify her more frequently. I think she's revealing that she has to prove that she's more than just an Asian, as though being an Asian is something bad in the first place. And it, and it shouldn't be. We should be comfortable with it. We should be comfortable with being Asian. I think it, it's not really a case of colonialism if they are actually happily displaying Asian art in the museum. I think that's the exact opposite. I think they, 
but by displaying kimonos within a museum as a piece of art, they're demonstrating that it's something respectable. Here's an image that says a non-Japanese person, like lecturing a Japanese person about cultural appropriation of Japanese culture. Japanese Americans don't have the option to experience white culture just for fun. That's not really true. They're experiencing white culture just for fun every single day. They're choosing to wear Western clothing. They're choosing to eat Western food. They've chosen it. Nobody's forced it upon them. So there's nothing unjust about it. Nobody's stolen the kimono from a Japanese person to exhibit it. It was commissioned by the Japanese government and then sent there. This is part of the problem with modern activism against racism in some ways. Because the only reason the protesters are feeling oppressed and feeling upset is because they've chosen to be offended by the activity, when there's nothing intrinsic to the activity that is hostile towards them. The hostility is all in their own mind. So they've actually just made themselves unhappy and then they're accusing everyone else of it. It doesn't really help anyone. The museum released the statement in response to all of the accusations themselves, and if you want, you can pause and, and take a read through that for yourself. And I, I think what they say is fair enough. I think it's the protesters are angry enough that anything said there is not going to make them feel better. So I, I feel like that, you know, it was set to fall from deaf e fall on deaf ears in the first place. But, you know, kudos for them for trying. So here is a letter that actually comes from Japanese Americans, Japanese nationals, who actually have no problem at all with the event and are upset that the event has had so many difficulties. And again, you can pause and, and read through that statement if you like. It goes to show that the protesters did not really do their homework. They didn't really consult with anyone about how they really felt. They didn't really consult with any of the participants to see whether or not they were actually attempting to be racist and reduce people to a negative stereotype. So I, I think they have overstepped their bounds. It's not as if I don't understand what these people are angry about. I do. I used to be angry about the same things. The problem is that their accusations are not necessarily legitimate. 